So good afternoon, everyone. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Keith Lynn, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Charles C. Jones Seminar Series. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. and Professor Payne Zong from the University of Stony Brook in New York. Uh, Dr. Zong got his PhD in electrical engineering from the University of British Columbia. And I have to say I'm impressed with this, that during his PhD, he had a full-time job as a system operator for uh, an electricity dispatching system. Uh, and he, in addition to being a uh, professor at the University of Stony Brook, he's also a member of the staff at uh, Brookhaven National Lab. So uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Zahn, who will speak to us about quantum computing in power systems. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Lin. Thank you so much. Okay. It's, it's a great pleasure and a privilege for me to be invited here. So, and today's topic is uh, it's about some new research. It's ongoing research in my lab. It's uh, quantum computing in power systems. Uh, as Professor Lin mentioned, I came from Stony Brook uh, in Long Island and uh, I'm a professor, and also in the meantime, I'm, I was uh, I am a staff scientist at uh, Brookhaven National Lab. Um, my lab is called just uh, Stony Brook Power System Lab. We have some active uh, grants going on right now. Uh, we also completed a lot of uh, projects before. Currently, we have four representative projects ongoing. Uh, the first one is is a large NSF grant called the AI Grid. The the longer name is called AI-enabled, uh, probably resilient, programmable network microgrids. So uh, the second one is uh, a DOE pr project. We, we are using the physics-informed uh, machine learning and other machine learning technologies to help uh, integrate massive amounts of solar energy into the grid safely and securely. Uh, we are also working with uh, utilities to integrate a lot of offshore wind into New York system. Uh, we, as part of the $5 million initiative uh, donated by Orsted and Eversource Energy, we are studying this uh, offshore wind integration uh, for our region. Uh, last but not least, uh, we are working on the quantum uh, uh, analytics to support a more resilient and more uh, efficient power system operations. Uh, this project I learned yesterday when attending an REEE conference as a speaker. Uh, the keynote speaker was a, a DOE director. He told me that this project uh, was the first uh, quantum computing project for energy he ever found, and so far it's the only one. So, uh, and this is actually uh, our focus uh, 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 to this talk. So regarding my, my lab's research, we have several uh, strategic directions. The top priority in my lab right now, including uh, the first one is quantum engineer smart grids, meaning how to use quantum computing, uh, quantum networking, and quantum security tools to uh, make uh, power system more resilient and more sustainable. The second uh, priority area is AI-enabled resilient grid operations. Uh, I, I'm also working on some other topics, but these two uh, are the uh, our focus right now. And those pictures shows part of my lab facilities. Also in pre previous uh, slides, uh, you can see some of the very advanced uh, real-time simulation uh, test bed uh, built in our lab. Uh, so this, actually, this is a test bed I have been built uh, over the years. So it, the core is a very uh, advanced uh, real-time simulator, RTDS, and it, it has been connected to uh, a lot of real power system controllers, protection devices, IoT devices, uh, even some cyber libraries, because we, when we need to, uh, uh, when we work on the cybersecurity research, we need to really launch some cyber attacks and, and find out how the system can defend against them. Uh, we also connect that to a lot of servers, a lot of distributed uh, edge computing devices, and some microgrid uh, functions, and uh, GPS, so on and so forth, storage. And we also have, uh, have built a very good visualization system 
um, this is the basic structure of this test bed. A lot of research uh, we're talking about today actually was done on this test bed. We, we really connect some of the uh, quantum facilities uh, interface with uh, uh, real-time simulations to do the closed loop test. Okay, uh, for the DOE uh, sponsored research about quantum analysis for power systems, our goal is to integrate uh, today's quantum computing facilities to help with uh, the power system resilience, power system security and reliability. So why we have to use uh, quantum facilities, quantum devices? Uh, it's because, okay, first let's look at today's power system. Uh, our today's smart grid uh, is very different from the traditional system anymore. Traditionally, our system is mainly based on the uh, traditional co-fired like power plants. They have big inertia. But today's power systems are more and more integrated with renewables, with electric vehicles, and a lot of intermittent resources or, or loads. And such a system, it's very difficult to control and because they are changing fast and they have very little inertia in it. So the, the control and protection and admission need to be done and, and also the uh, decision making needs to be done in a micro, uh, millisecond or even, even faster uh, manner. Uh, also, our community uh, has a higher demand on uh, energy uh, resilience, sustainability, and also equity. So expanding needs, it's really hard to be met in, by today's power systems. And there's some uh, major issues that really make the situation even worse, so it's, uh, especially the today's uh, uh, the computing capabilities in power system is not enough to support the, first, it cannot be, uh, it's not enough to handle the gigantic volume of data generated from smart sensors we have uh, today, like PMUs, uh, synchronous phaser uh, uh, units, and also IoT devices. The second thing is the existing uh, the analysis algorithms we're using in the control room or in the planning departments of utilities, they're not very scalable or they're not able to offer the real-time and high fidelity results needed to manage so many uh, renewable energy sources and to ensure the system to be resilient and stable in real time. Uh, because the, uh, the scale of the problem has been uh, very, very large and also there's so many uncertainties in it. Uh, that's why we started to, to try uh, applying the quantum technologies and try to find out some uh, solutions for all those challenges. So over the years, we started this kind of research uh, about four years ago. Uh, we believe that we are the first one in, in, in the world has been uh, trying the quantum technology for, for power system solutions. Uh, we got our first uh, federal grant about two and a half years ago, so from DOE, and also from other resources later on. So uh, we have uh, contributed over the four years uh, several categories of uh, quantum analytics. The first one, we started from uh, working on the so-called far-term power system an analytics, meaning those analytics can be used for the ideal uh, noise-free quantum devices. Uh, we designed the quantum power flow, quantum state estimation, and quantum electromagnetic training simulation tools for power systems. So later, we uh, moved to the near-term an analytics, so basically this and those analytics can be used directly on today's uh, quantum devices, like some of you already know, IBM Q uh, machines. Uh, currently IBM has a lot of machines. Some machines have been open for public. If you go to the IBM Q website, you can register for account and use their, some of their machines, probably up to 27 qubits. But some machines uh, are not open to the public, but uh, they're open for researchers from national labs. So uh, we designed the uh, noise resilient quantum uh, electromagnetic channel, channel program uh, that can be used for near term machines. And we designed uh, quantum Monte Carlo methods uh, that can be used for reliability or some stochastic analysis for power systems. Uh, in terms of optimization, we started uh, two years ago, we designed a distributed quantum ADMM. A lot of you uh, may know ADMM, it's widely used for distributed optimization. And we quanti uh, 
uh, we make it into a quantum algorithm and successfully use that for unit commitment in power systems. Later, we uh, build a quantum algorithm for uh, surrogate Lagrangian relaxation. This one has the potential to be used to solve the mixed uh, integer optimization problem. We also tried the quantum machine learning algorithms. We designed the quantum neural networks for a very fast channel stability assessment for power systems. Uh, recently, some students also work on the quantum GAN. It's a special type of uh, uh, machine learning tool to generate uh, renewable scenarios for planning purposes. Another category of work is quantum control. So we make uh, leverage the interaction between qubits and also uh, leverage the, uh, the quantum channels uh, that can allow the uh, interaction, uh, interactions between uh, quantum, quantum bits to achieve distributed control in, in power systems. So we're going to talk about a little bit uh, later. So the, four, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the last category is uh, quantum security. So we successfully implemented the quantum key distribution to protect against uh, cyber attacks in, in um, microgrids. But we did find some problems when we implement that. So we later, we integrate software-defined networks to improve the resilience of QKD applications. Uh, currently, we, we have built a quantum uh, internet simulation tool uh, interface with uh, real-time simulators for power systems. We use this testbed to try more quantum protocols or quantum security technologies in the future. So those are something we have done in past uh, three or four years. Among those quantum uh, uh, computing technologies, I'm going to use uh, quantum EMTP, or electromagnetic trans simulation tools as an example to show you how quantum computer can be used to solve some very difficult problem in power system. So, uh, so feel free to interrupt me if you, um, because I really cannot give you all the background information. So if you, you feel that you want to know more about uh, uh, the terms or background information, just let me know. So EMTP, uh, it's, it's a short term for Electro, uh, electromagnetic transient program. It is one of the most widely used tool uh, in today's power system planning and, and uh, operations. So um, it models the power system dynamics in a very detailed manner, probably the, uh, uh, and it can provide the a wide uh, spectrum of power system transients during the disturbances or whatever scenarios. Um, it does not really rely on a lot of assumptions, so it can give you the high fidelity results. And it's highly needed for today's power system operations. But the problem is EMTP is so expensive, computationally or, or, or you know, expenditure-wise, it's very expensive. Uh, and that really stops the wide adoption of the EMTP in today's power system analysis. So first, let's look at you know, how EMTP work. So how people, uh, build an EMTP algorithm and, and, and run that in the computer, today's classic computer. So EMTP's approach started from like uh, the modeling the power system each, uh, dynamic components. We like uh, separate the power system into many, many small components. If you look at the dynamic components, you just write down all the different equations that can uh, describe its uh, dynamic behavior. Next, you apply some integration rule, for example, trapezoidal rule, uh, to convert the uh, continuous, continuous time model for the power system components into discrete time uh, model, uh, model. So that model, eventually, if you model that you know, in a, a pretty smart way, eventually you can rearrange that into a form that has a uh, equivalent resistance and a current source. The current source here is, uh, we also call it historical term, because that source uh, are formed by the measurements or calculations from the previous time step, and uh, everything's known. So, and the, if you assemble the component, dynamic components uh, formulations uh, using the nodal methods, eventually you can uh, get the uh, large set of linear uh, uh, equation sets. Basically, it's G times V equals I. Here, I uh, is a vector of history terms plus some uh, water sources, uh, current sources injecting to the buses. 
V uh, is a vector for nodal voltages. Basically, those are voltages at different buses in power systems. And V is an unknown value that uh, you need to uh, find out. G is a, uh, it's a huge matrix about the equivalent uh, reactances, uh, in, uh, conductances in, in the power system. And G is a very large uh, matrix. But the beautiful thing of this formulation, EMTP formulation, is that it fully preserves the sparsity in power systems. Even though the G is huge, it's a huge matrix, could be million by million uh, uh, scale, but it's highly sparse. So that means uh, the Gaussian elimination of uh, this, this uh, uh, solution will be pretty efficient. But the problem is the EMTP simulation need step-by-step -step calculation. Uh, to capture the fast trends, you need to use very small time step. And still, it's a, it's a huge number of uh, uh, equation sets. So the uh, calculation of EMTP on a uh, classical computer is very difficult. And if you have used some of the power system uh, simulation tools, like RTDS or uh, PSCAD or whatever commercial tools uh, for mod modeling power system, you have the same experience. For example, if you model a small microgrid on even a very expensive uh, real-time simulator, it may uh, uh, it cannot scale up. It probably can only model a very small scale system. If you are using the offline EMTP, it takes probably days to, to simulate a very short, like a several seconds of challenge. Uh, that's why we're thinking, you know, whether we can use quantum computers to speed up the solution of this uh, uh, linear equation set at each time step. And eventually we can uh, uh, improve the solution efficiency. Now the question is, how to solve EMTP uh, in the quantum space? So what we need to do is, uh, first we need to prepare the quantum state for currents. Here the current is a history term. So it's a, we need to prepare this uh, current I into quantum states. And with that, we need to solve the voltage uh, as a quantum state. But Working in the quantum space is, uh, is not uh, straightforward. So if we, we look at the classical bit uh, represented by classical computers, it's zero or one. It's very uh, easy to understand. But if you look at the quantum, uh, quantum bit uh, a, or a qubit, uh, a single qubit could be in a bit state zero or one, which is a vector, OK? Um, or it could be a superposition uh, of the two bit uh, states. Uh, psi equals alpha, alpha zero plus beta one. So here, alpha and beta, uh, uh, alpha, alpha square and beta square are the probabilities uh, that the uh, qubits uh, in, in each state. So to solve the uh, linear equation set we will mention for the EMTP, when, uh, one way, a popular way is to build a quantum, quantum state, a quantum circuit to solve that. Quantum circuit is, uh, can be uh, set up by using a series of quantum gates. And those quantum gates can be, can be applied on the uh, N-qubit register. And if you're, um, you prepare the initial stage and you go through this quantum, uh, quantum ga gates, uh, quantum circuits, you're able to find out the uh, quantum results. So, Uh, if you look at the literature, so uh, today's quantum linear solver theoretically can achieve the um, exponential speed up uh, compared to the traditional uh, linear solver. So it's, uh, but, but, but the, the, the problem is, for example, the word, uh, there's a very popular method called HHL circuit. Uh, but if you really run the HHL circuit using IBM Q machine um, yourself, you will soon find out it cannot uh, be used for uh, real skill problem. First, even for a very small skill power system, the HSL circuit can be very deep, uh, the generated circuits. If the circuit is too deep, that means uh, it's very uh, sensitive to the no noises in, the, in the, uh, today's quantum machines. And as a result, the final, uh, the measured results for the voltages will be uh, a lot of error in it. Sometimes it does not make any sense for you. Um, 
So in order to make the ideal uh, or general purpose uh, quantum computing too useful, uh, you, you need a lot of uh, ideal machine with a lot of qubits. So uh, that makes the, uh, the, those general purpose two not very useful for us. So we had to uh, design a different type of circuit so that uh, they can be used uh, can be used for the real skill uh, problem. That's why uh, we we are seeking a different way to solve the uh, quantum uh, linear problem. So uh, the, uh, the solution is called a variational quantum linear solver. So what is variational linear solver? So uh, variational linear solver is a solver that allow you to use a very limited number of qubits and very shallow uh, depth circuit to solve a real skill problem. But how does it happen? Uh, the key is that you, you uh, implement a, an op optimizer to uh, optimize your quantum circuit, uh, tun uh, tuning their uh, parameters so that this shallow depth quantum circuit uh, become uh, uh, possible to, to produce uh, accurate results for you. So basically, if you look at this uh, uh, diagram, so first you start uh, from like creating a uh, initial quantum circuit. So, but obviously, if you directly use this circuit, it does not give you very good results. But you then you have a uh, optimizer that uh, will be running on the classroom machine. That uh, optimizer will take the output and uh, we evaluate the cost function. Uh, and minimize it. By minimizing the cost function, they produce updated parameters for the uh, quantum circuit and send it back, it send it back to the uh, quantum circuit. After a few iterations, the, 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 the tuned quantum circuit will give you very good results, very accurate and nice resilient results. Then you start from there, you call it, uh, you know, in the future, you, you can use this optimized circuit for your calculations. This is the basic idea. So now let's look at the, uh, the solution of the linear circuits as an example. So uh, the general idea is you create a quantum circuit. Actually, when you really build a quantum circuit, it's very interesting. You really can start from uh, a very random circuit. So, uh, so far in the literature, I really didn't find there's a systematic way to, to, uh, to build uh, the best topology. It is still an area um, that need to be uh, researched. So you can start from some uh, circuit, uh, either from the published li uh, liter uh, literature or you can build a circuit by yourself. You can put a few layers, uh, gauge, and then you run your uh, calculation for AX equals B, and then send the results to um, optimizer so, and, and minimize it. So after iterations, you will find out, okay, the circuit now behaves uh, that can achieve your your uh, your, um, your your goal to produce some accurate results, and then you can fix that circuit as an ansearch. So later you can just use this ansearch for for future calcula calculations. So as an example, uh, we use this simple circuit like with uh, uh, eight states. So the A matrix is an eight, eight by eight matrix. B is a eight dimension vector. So what, what we need to do is we solve the AX equals B uh, for this simple, uh, simple system. Um, to prepare the quantum circuit, so what the first step is to, you need to decompose the A matrix into uh, some unitary matrices. This is the reason is because only unitary matrix can be directly represented by uh, the unitary uh, gauge in quantum computer. So, of course, there are different ways, and, and there's not a fixed way to do that. So you can, as long as you can find out a uh, the uh, decomposition that can produce a series of um, uh, unitary matrix to represent A, uh, you can stop here. And then the next step is, uh, you do the same thing. You uh, you find out some unitary op operators uh, for the uh, operator uh, uh, U uh, with the hope that uh, if you apply the initial stage zero uh, to this uh, series of unitary operators, you, you'll be able to find, um, uh, get B. 
So uh, step two is that you construct a variational quantum circuit uh, to, start, uh, to start from. So this circuit will give you some results uh, for, for your states that you, you want to find. Of course, the result may not be accurate, but that's okay. So you start from here, you design a circuit. Uh, sometimes when you design a circuit, you need to understand the topology of your quantum computers, uh, the number of qubits you, you have in the quantum computer and how they are connected. Uh, you, it, it's always good to understand a little more about your quantum computers so that your circuit, the connection of the circuit can be really implemented effectively on the specific quantum computer. And next, we construct a cost function uh, in this form, and then we use that for the optimization. Okay. Uh, once the optimization process has been done, uh, the uh, corresponding like uh, parameters of the quantum circuits, for those quantum circuits are uh, the parameters for each quantum gate. So, for example, the uh, uh, what the de degrees of rotation of some of the gates, for example, those can be optimized. Eventually, the optimized parameters will be uh, sent to the quantum uh, circuit. You use that uh, that as an ansatch. So, and uh, next, you send the uh, you use this uh, optimized circuit to calculate ax equal to b, and uh, if you try that on quantum computer, you will soon find out the uh, the solution will be very close to the classical uh, uh, results. So now let's coming back to EMTP. So, uh, we want to apply this philosophy, the variational quantum linear solver for EMTP solution for fast transients in power systems. So uh, the first step, of course, is to construct uh, some form of uh, circuit to solve the EMTP uh, formulation, GV equals I. So, and you also design optimizer that can be uh, operated in a, on the classical machine to minimize the, the cost function. Uh, and after the optimization process is done, so all the optimized uh, parameters will be sent to the quantum circuit and the circuit will be fixed. Later, you can use that to solve the uh, EMTP solution. But uh, when we really build this circuit, we found that there are two challenges, actually more challenges, but uh, the top two challenges we had uh, that stop us really can, uh, use a general purpose variation circuit for a real problem is that first, if you look at the history terms, so it can be, it's arbitrary vector. Uh, this kind of vector is very difficult to get prepared uh, by, by quantum gates. The second uh, problem is this, the measured voltage from this circuit uh, is uh, it's not a real voltage. The reason is because uh, the result is actually the modulus of uh, the magnitude of the, um, the voltage. And you don't know whether your voltage is negative or, or positive. So it's a probability. And that value uh, does not really give you the voltage. So, meaning the voltage is not really measurable for you. Okay, this is a problem of the general purpose EQLS. So how to solve the problem? So, we, uh, we propose a, a technique to do that uh, based on the power system characteristics. So, first, instead of really solving the EMTP formulation, we start from another set of solver, we call the basis EMTP solver. So here, we're assuming that the history, the history term, the current injection into the power system is not an arbitrary uh, um, vector. Rather, we start from some basis current injection, so IK. IK means that only the case uh, element is one, and the rest of elements are all zeros. So then with this current injection, uh, we use quantum computer to find out what is the power system response to this uh, uh, injection. So uh, through the quantum uh, calculation, we can find out the voltage V uh, based on this basis current injection. And we can mathematically, we can prove that uh, this voltage, the magnitude, is, uh, the voltage is always non-negative. That means we can directly use the modulus of the voltage to represent voltage. Now, 
both uh, the now the current is uh, the voltage is measurable, and the current the current uh, the basis current is preparable because we can easily use polyscape to uh, to generate this uh, this current. Um, but how to get the real uh, power system training response? We need to try different basis current injections into the grid, and then we do a superposition. And eventually, the final result, the final real power system responses, you know, the voltages at different buses, actually is a sum of uh, all the um, responses uh, for uh, all the basis current injections. So this is the idea how to solve EMTP using quantum computer. So to make the solution more efficient, we don't want to solve all these basis responses in series. We want to solve them simultaneously. To do that, we build augmented, uh, like a basis solver. But the problem is uh, the, the, the basis solver is, 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 uh, is to solve an uh, n-dimension problem. And the augmented uh, solver is an n-squared dimension problem. So if we're using the classic computer, then uh, it's, it's, very, uh, it's a daunting task. Because it can, be, it can make the uh, solution uh, intractable. But for quantum computer, it's not a problem because uh, for an n-square dimension problem, we just need to use two log n uh, qubits to solve that. Meaning, okay, suppose we, we are dealing with a 1,000 bus power system. Uh, theoretically, 20 qubits is enough for us to get the results. And now, if, if you build an augmented uh, 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 solver that need to deal with 1 million dimensions of uh, problem, it's very difficult for a classical computer, but for uh, quantum computers, I just need uh, to use 40 qubits. I just double the qubits, I can deal with um, uh, 1,000 times more like uh, uh, dimensions. So, uh, so quantum computers theoretically, it's very good to solve the uh, ultra-scale power system problems. So, as you can see. So now, uh, now, now we have designed the quantum solver. We, we play some tricks, some scales to avoid some challenges. We want to verify that, whether it really works. First, before we really implement that in a real quantum computer, we verify that on the noise-free quantum simulators provided by IBM. So we use that to, to observe the optimization process and how, how well this variational philosophy works. So as you can see, for this circuit, we designed a very interesting circuit with, with both fast transients and slow transients existing in the same system. Um, and we observe this uh, um, uh, optimization process. As you can see, after a few iterations, the fidelity of the solution quickly uh, increase and the error quickly goes down to a very, very small value. So the results compared with uh, classical uh, results, they are very close to each other. And we also draw the quantum computing results step by step. We got this uh, transients for both slow system and fast system. They, they, all, uh, uh, they are all identical to the classical method. Next, uh, we have another challenge. In the real power systems, we often have the, uh, the system may often change the topology. For example, if you have a fault happening in the, in the transmission line, you trip it. So then the system topology changes. Sometimes, uh, even worse, you, uh, the system can be split into several subsystems. So the topology changes. Uh, correspondingly, our quantum circuits need to also change. So for example, for this uh, system with two subsystems, if this transmission line between each other was chipped, then we have to use two quantum circuits to solve it. We have to prepare uh, two quantum circuits. And we did this, we designed uh, the quantum algorithm uh, automatically. So once we de detect this, uh, this change, topology change, uh, we quickly initiate you know, uh, the topology change inside the quantum computer. And then we, we uh, calculate uh, the results and compare with the traditional methods. And the results shows that uh, it's, uh, this uh, quantum, quantum algorithm we designed can uh, adapt to the uh, structure changes in person pretty well. So uh, it's very accurate. With that, we 
implement the quantum EMTP to the IBM machine, the real IBM machine. First, we test the IEEE uh, 123 bus feeder the, uh, system on the IBM Q27 uh, 20, qubit system. And uh, the, the real calculation, uh, the calculation through the uh, real quantum Q machine shows that the quantum EMTP gives you the identical results. And we, we did the step-by-step -step error analysis. As you can see, the error of, uh, from quantum computer is very, very small. It's negligibly small. Uh, that shows that variational method can really effectively make the uh, quantum circuit more noise resilient, yeah, even on the today's noisy quantum computers. We did a lot of other tests uh, to try the quantum computers with different gate error, uh, different uh, decoherence uh, time, so on and so forth. And on, on this, uh, on our algorithm, we, we found out that um, our algor algorithm still works pretty well under different or very noisy uh, quantum computers. And also we increase uh, the circuit depths of this uh, our quantum circuit, and we found out longer depths, of course, will uh, reduce uh, accuracy, but still uh, the accuracy is uh, still ex uh, acceptable. Uh, next, we further improve the quantum EMTP uh, efficiency by introducing a technique called the sifted frequency analysis. Uh, sifted frequency analysis uh, is uh, uh, instead of using the instantaneous time values for what is in current and power, we use dynamic feathers to model power system. So the idea is that if you look at the power system signal, you can, you can construct an analytic signal of power system signal. Uh, that makes the uh, instantaneous real uh, waveforms into the complex waveforms. And then you shift this uh, analog signal by 60 hertz, by fundamental frequency. Uh, then uh, that variable you got is called dynamic phasor. Um, so traditional EMTP model the power system dynamics using the real waveforms. But uh, if we introduce shift frequency analysis, we use dynamic phasors to model the power system uh, dynamics. So meaning uh, the EMTP calculation is not performed on the uh, real waveforms, they are performed in the dynamic phasor domain. So that allows us to use much larger time step in the simulation. Um, and after that, after you calculate the dynamic, dynamic phasors along the time, you can uh, easily convert it back to the instantaneous values. So uh, we are able to uh, build a quantum circuit, use the previous quantum analysis tool uh, to perform the quantum SFA. So, and this circuit is able to give us the dynamic phasor results, the complex waveform, which accurately capture the envelopes of the power system waveforms. And then we are able to convert it back to the real, like a uh, uh, instantaneous waveforms, and uh, it's still very accurate. Uh, of course, the uh, efficiency would be uh, much more uh, improved because we are able to use large time step. Uh, we do the quantum computing for less iterations. Okay, so those uh, those are some examples how to use quantum, quantum computer for real problems. It's a little bit tricky. So if you look at the, uh, our paper, you will see there's so many tricks or, or some uh, 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 method that has to be uh, um, introduced to the solution uh, so that we can, we can use the quantum circuit for power systems. Uh, next, I'm going to summarize what we have been doing uh, in past few years. Uh, the first group of quantum analytics is the so-called uh, the long-term quantum analytics. The first algorithm we develop is called quantum power flow. Uh, we use the traditional uh, HHL quantum circuit to calculate uh, the power system state, voltage, current, and power flow in different branches. Uh, we have to introduce a some of um, error mitigation mechanism to improve HHL so that uh, this uh, method can be used for power flow calculation. We also uh, we developed the uh, quantum state estimation method. This method is able to uh, evaluate the states in microgrids. Uh, we are able to 
incorporate the microgrid controller effects into the calculation of uh, microgrid stage, like a primary control, secondary control, so on and so forth. We also introduced a few uh, iterative approach to mitigate the error. And the final results, uh, uh, it's very accurate and uh, it's, it's pretty noise resilient and, and it's even more uh, cyber attack resilient. Uh, we also developed the, the uh, long-term quantum electromagnetic training program. Uh, it's a modification of HHL algorithm again um, that can produce you pretty good results on the ideal quantum device. This one we already talked is a near-term uh, EMTP that can be used for uh, today's uh, quantum, quantum machines. Another near-term uh, electro uh, power, power system analytics is uh, quantum Monte Carlo-based reliability analysis. So it is also a variational circuit. And we use vari this vari variational circuit to produce the probabilistic distributions of power system states. And use, uh, then we use that to uh, provide either the uh, distributions of system states or the expected values of system states. We're able to use that to produce reliability indexes for power system for the long-term performance, such as uh, safety CD or, or KD. Those are the indexes showing the, uh, the long-term uh, outage frequency or long-term outage duration in the, in the power system. Uh, we developed the variational circuit to, to implement ADMM on the quantum circuit, and we use that for power system unit commitment. Uh, we can show that it can be used for medium or large scale uh, unit commitment with, uh, with continuous variables. Uh, recently, we work on the quantum surrogate Lagrangian relaxation. Also, we use uh, the variational circuit called the QAOA. It's approximated uh, optimization uh, solver, but we introduce uh, the uh, surrogate Lagrangian mechanism so that it can better uh, represent the, the mixed integer optimization problem. So we also apply that for large scale unit, unit commitment for uh, problem in power systems. Another interesting work is uh, quantum machine learning for uh, trend stability analysis. Trend stability analysis is one of the most difficult problems in power system. Here, we use a var variational machine learning method. We use optimization tool to, to, to tune the uh, quantum uh, deep ne neural network. Uh, and this neural network can then can be used to predict the system uh, stability uh, uh, feature. Like uh, if you give some initial states of this uh, power system, and also you apply the, some, some of the disturbances to the system. And this uh, quantum machine learning tool can quickly predict whether the system will be stable or, or, or unstable. So uh, we found that we can, uh, this tool is very, very scalable. So one of the most scalable uh, methods we have developed so far. Uh, based on a, a 20 qubit machine, actually we didn't fully use it. We, sometimes we only use five or seven or, or eight qubits we're able to uh, pre predict the stability of a large system, like a northeast uh, US grid system, or uh, RGB 300 bus system, so on and so forth. Uh, this is uh, quantum GAN, quantum uh, generative adversarial uh, network, to, to quickly generate a lot of extreme scenarios uh, in, in power systems for planning purpose. We also make use of the uh, Hamiltonian dynamics uh, in the qubits to mimic the uh, consensus process of the distribution con uh, distributed control in, in power system, especially in microgrids. We apply this method for microgrids. We found that uh, by using the interacting qubits, we're able to reach the synchronization among uh, the uh, distributed energy resources in uh, microgrids so that we can achieve the fast like uh, frequency restoration or water restoration in those systems. Uh, another good feature of this method is that because we leverage uh, the quantum channel, uh, that makes the whole distributed control process very secure. Uh, based on a no cloning principle, uh, basically the 
any attacker that, that want to intrude into your system, trying to copy your state, uh, will be detected immediately. So uh, the system is very cyber secure. And we apply that for AC microgrid. It works really well. We apply that for DC microgrids. They also uh, work pretty well, put pretty well. And this work has recently been published by the Attribution Lighting Power Systems. We have done a series of quantum security uh, technologies. The first one we tried is about many years ago, maybe four years, five years ago. We um, developed a quantum key distribution engine and interface that with the real-time simulator that models uh, real performance of microgrids. And we found that uh, by introducing the quantum channel uh, plus the quantum key, key generation, we're able to defend the uh, um, microgrids against attackers with quantum computer attacks, okay? Uh, but uh, the feasibility has been approved, uh, has, has been uh, validated, but we also find the problem that sometimes uh, the uh, the need for quantum key is uh, is is too much in some uh, in some nodes of the microgrids. Uh, if the quantum key has been uh, depleted, um, then we may have some problems in the system stability. Uh, because of that, we introduced a software defined networking technology, SDN technology, to further improve the resilience of QKD uh, enabled microgrids. So we we introduce the uh, dynamic routing, uh, the read, per, uh, the, uh, uh, the the QKD uh, read uh, limitation, and also we add a firewall uh, in, in the system. So the three lines of defense, uh, accru you know, effectively uh, makes the system more resilient. Uh, finally, we uh, we are building a test bed. Uh, for quantum internet, for quantum networking uh, system connected uh, in a closed loop with microgrids. And uh, the purpose of building this testbed is we want to try uh, different quantum security technologies, uh, either QKD or some semi-quantum uh, security technology or some even some uh, post-quantum uh, technologies and see how they, they can work together uh, to defend microgrids. Uh, we also uh, are looking to uh, building a quantum internet so and, and use that for power system communications to support uh, grid monitoring, control, and automation functions. And also we are looking into different uh, quantum internet protocols and see how they can be used for power systems. So eventually, uh, we want to continue work on all these uh, different layers of innovations, including quantum analytics for high-level advanced uh, monitoring and, and management of uh, smart grids. We also will work on the quantum internet, trying to build a real prototype quantum internet uh, on campus and build, uh, interface that with, with uh, real-time simulators and validate the uh, effectiveness the miss of quantum internet uh, in future power system operations and also cyber security defense. We also will work on the quantum different uh, quantum networking technologies to, uh, to find out you know, how to uh, make the communication more secure and efficient. So that's our goal in the next couple of years in this direction of research. I think I'll stop here. Uh, I want to thank the support from uh, DOE from NSF and ONR, those three agencies generously supported us uh, in the past few years, especially DOE. They give us the first grant ever um, in this topic, so they are very visionary. And now the quantum engineered smart grid has become a new wave. A uh, lot of uh, national labs or universities are start is started to work on this. And hopefully, uh, we'll com continue to make more contributions and keep our leadership in this area. Thank you. Thank you.